So what is fasting? We hear about it, and if you've been here for a period of time, you've heard me talk about it. Here, here, let me give you the, like, fasting for dummies, a little Cliff's Notes definition of it. Fasting, in short, is abstaining from anything. It's not just a spiritual practice. I mean, it's got, like, gobs of physical as well as spiritual benefits. In fact, every major faith that's ever been on earth has practiced fasting. And when you go through the Bible, there are countless scriptures that describe fasting, that, that instruct us to fast. Here's just a few. You got Deuteronomy 9, 9, Ezra 10, 6, Nehemiah 1, 4, Esther 4, 16, Daniel 9, 3, Joel 2, 12 through 16, Jonah 3, 5 through 10. Matthew 6, 16 through 18, Luke 2, 37, Acts 27, 33. Isaiah 58 is probably the most extensive teaching on fasting in the entire Bible. We're not going to look at all these scriptures today, but listen, go back and read them throughout the year. Talk to yourself about fasting. Pray about what it is that you're supposed to do, right? And so there's all kinds of things. The book talks about all sorts of different fasts. It's not like one way. It's not like one size fits all. There's all sorts of different fasts that are described in this book. I want to give you just three of them today. Here's like the first one. There's the absolute fast, or it could also be called the full fast. The absolute fast or the full fast, that's basically liquids only. Like it's water, 100% juice, like clear broth, it is not Culver's milkshakes. Like you can't be on a liquids only fast and drink three Oreo milkshakes from Culver's a day. People go, how did you gain weight not eating for 21 days? I don't know. I just had taken in like 16,000 calories a day. But my God, I love the Oreo shake. I didn't even know that they had them. Did you know that Culver's has different shake flavors every single day? You can have a peanut butter shake, you can have a salted caramel shake, you can have a raspberry shake. You cannot be on an absolute or total fast, full fast, and do nothing but drink milkshakes, okay? It's, and this is a fast that, that it's not for the faint of heart. Like, God's got to tell you to do this fast. You don't just wake up one day and go, you know what? For 21 days, I'm not going to eat. You know, for some of you, you're like, oh, you're on medications and they require food. Anyway, you just pray about that. For me, for the next 21 days, this is the fast that I'm doing. I'm doing a, a liquids-only fast or a total fast or a full fast. Here's the second. It's called a partial fast. And a partial fast is when you, like, per, you choose a particular thing or for some people, they choose a particular time. When you look in the Muslim faith, they do this a ton. They do the, they do the sun up to sun down. And so for some of you, you're going to choose, I'm going to do the sun up to sun down. What you cannot do is fast from the time you go to sleep until the time you wake up. That doesn't count, right? I mean, most of you, hopefully most of you do that anyway. Hopefully most of you don't wake up in the middle of the night. Hopefully you don't have a little beer fridge next to your, you know, say you open it up. You know, what do you got in there? Well, I got the little beanie weenies and I got shrimp sauce in here. I got, it's 3 a.m. I'm kind of hungry. You know, for some of you, hopefully you're already fasting from the time you go to sleep till the time you wake up. You know, that's why they call it breakfast. It's called breakfast because you're supposed to be breaking a fast. Some of you are going to go, wow, that makes a lot of sense. See that? See the stuff you learned today when you got, I didn't learn anything about Jesus, but I learned why we call it breakfast today. So for some of you, you're going to do a partial fast. Here's the third. There's a, book, there's a, a fast in this book that's called the Daniel Fast. And this is a fast that a guy named Daniel partook in. You can find it in Daniel chapter 10, particularly verse 2 and 3. And here's what the Daniel fast is. It's no meat. It's no bread. It's no sweets. And I'm going to tell you right now, it's no fun. It's just hard. It's anything. Daniel didn't partake of anything other than what came from the ground. And if you want it in like a nutshell, it's just fruits and vegetables. And so Daniel, two different times, once he fasted that 21 days and another time he fasted for 10 days. All I'm trying to tell you is that in this book there are options. You can take any one of these three or you can get off on your own, get alone with God, and come up with your very own fast. We have people who have fasted coffee, people who have fasted Coke or Diet Coke, people who have fasted TV or Netflix or the Internet, people who have fasted sugar, some people fasted alcohol, some people fasted chocolate or social media, whatever. There's a board outside the auditorium with some examples of things that people have done. I would love it if you'd go out and look at that or if you'd write what you want to do for your fast. Choose your own, but it has to be something difficult. Like, you can't fast exercise unless you're one of those weird people who's going to die if you don't bench press over the night. We got a few guys like that in this church where I'm like, really? What? You win. Like, you got, hey, yeah, good job. You've got all the muscles. You've lifted all the weight. 
kudos to you. I'll be running with my T-Rex arms. Like this is, you can't fat if you're not up. Some of you have been fasting exercise for the last 40 years, right? So well done. You can't fast paying your taxes, okay? Like if you fast paying your taxes, you'll be fasting your freedom. Here's my only point, is that it has to be something that's uncomfortable. Fasting has to be something that's difficult. It has to be a sacrifice. And it isn't an option. The book says that it's an expectation. Not because God wants to punish you, but because he wants to protect you. Because he wants to prepare you. And in my 20 plus years of running after Jesus, I can tell you one thing. Undeniably, nothing moves the hand of God more than fasting. So let me leave you with one last scripture. It's from Ezra chapter 8, verse 21 through 23. There's the backdrop. It's about 457 B.C., a guy named Ezra. He's about to lead a group of Jews from Babylonian captivity back to the city of Jerusalem. It's about 80 years after a group of Jews led by Zerubbabel went back to Jerusalem and rebuilt the temple. The temple's already been rebuilt, but the people are in rebellion. And so Ezra and his little group of people, they're going back so that they can restore the people back to God. And in the face of that task, here's what Ezra says. He says, there, by the Ahava Canal, I proclaimed a fast so that we might humble ourselves before our God and ask him for a safe journey for us and our children with all of our possessions. I was ashamed to ask the king for soldiers and horsemen to protect us against the enemies on the road because we had already told the king that the gracious hand of our God is on everyone who looks to him, but his great anger is against those who forsake him. So we fasted and we petitioned our God about this and he answered our prayer. The purpose of the fast in Ezra was to prepare the people for something significant. Three things. It was so that they would know the way, so that they would have protection, and so they would have provision. You say, well, what's that have to do with us? Well, God has special plans for this church, plans that we haven't even dared to consider. He has plans for something significant beyond our wildest dreams, but more importantly, God has special plans for you, plans that you haven't even dared to consider, plans for something wild, plans for something significant. In his book called Fasting, Pastor Jensen Franklin says, could we be missing our greatest breakthroughs because we fail to fast? It's with that in mind that I'm asking you to join me on a 21-day corporate fast from today, January the 1st through January the 21st. I want us as a church to pray and fast. Whatever type of fast you want to do, that's up to you. But with the fast, we need to commit to prayer for those 21 days because fasting without prayer is just a diet. And so we're going to give you the opportunity to pray every day in this auditorium for the next 21 days for 21 minutes every day. Monday through Saturday, we're going to meet in this auditorium from noon till 1221, and we are going to pray. On Sundays, it starts at 830. We'll be praying at 830 every Sunday morning for the next three Sundays, okay? And so I'm going to ask you to join me in a corporate fast and a corporate time of prayer. Now, I'm committing to a different kind of resolution. I'm committing to a resolution that's not centered on me, but that is centered on someone else. And so from January the 1st until January the 21st, I am going to fast and pray for you, for your marriages and for your finances, for your family and for your friends and for your neighbors, for your health. I'm going to fast and pray for our city and for our church so that we will know the way, so that we will have protection, and so we will have provision. I'm just asking, will you do that today? Today, will you consider making a different kind of resolution that isn't focused on you, but is centered on someone else?